good. Good morning, SJCAC. Good morning. Welcome, SJCAC. From our family to yours, we're wishing everyone to be safe and healthy. God bless everyone. Hi everybody, just wanted to say hello and let you know how much we appreciate you guys for calling and for your support in the groceries and meals. Can't wait to see you in real life and uh, just want to let you know we're never alone. Jesus and His Spirit is always with us. Hi everyone, New Vine family and San Jose family. Just want you to know how much we miss you and we can't wait to the day when we'll see each and every one of you in person. In the meantime, please stay well, stay healthy, and stay safe. I miss not coming to church for almost for five weeks already. But I still remember everybody, and I, I hope to come back soon. But we are so lucky that we can still watch Sunday sermon of Pastor Ted, Pastor Douglas, and also Sandy. Hope to see everybody soon. Bye bye. Family, friends, we welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That the Spirit of the Lord will rest in peace upon you and His love you comfort yourself. Not only are our church doors are open, but also our hearts and willingness to carry your burdens to the cross if you are willing. Hope to meet you in person. Welcome! Hallelujah! Lord Jesus Christ is coming back! Mommy, coffee's ready. Now it's time to worship. Aloha, everybody. It's so good to see you out here in YouTube land. I just want to say I miss everybody, but uh, we're all in this together. So as we uh, begin our time of worship, I'm going to ask you to please stand as we invite God's presence. So Lord, we invite your presence here today. Lord, we seek your face today, God. We want to know you. We want to see you. We want to hear from you, God. We hunger and we thirst after you. And we welcome you here, God. We say Hosanna to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are worthy to be praised today. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with me And if my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go In every high and every low Oh no, you never let go Lord, you never let go of me I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare and There will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes 
will live to know you here on the earth, and I will fear no evil, for my God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes still I will praise you still I will praise you yes I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on And there will be an end To these troubles But until that day comes Still I will praise you Still I will praise you Singing, oh no You never let go Through the calm and through the storm You never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. You keep on running and you never let go. Singing, oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no. You never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, Lord, you never let go. You were always faithful, God. Better is one day. Better is one day, better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one, better is one day, better is one day, better is one. The shadow of your wings. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. 
Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask and I would see to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells One thing I ask and I would to see your beauty, to find you in the place your glory dwells. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, than thousands elsewhere. My heart, my heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God, your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you, it's your lovely face that I see, better is one day. Better is one day, better is one day, the thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day, the thousands elsewhere. Sing it out. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, in thousands elsewhere, in thousands elsewhere. Father, we thank you for the gift of your presence this morning. Thank you that regardless of our situation, where we are, whether we can go out or not, once again, you're graciously inviting us into the Holy of Holies, into your court, into your house, into the depth of your presence, Lord. Father, we're not just praying for another online experience, but our desire and our longing today is that for this very hour, that we will encounter you face to face. We take shelter under your wings today and receive the gift of peace and gift of your power, Lord, to, to go through and, and to not just to survive this crisis, Lord, but, but to rise up as your people, to emerge as your beautiful bride 
in this season. So Father, once again, we ask for your presence to visit every home, every family. As we continue to declare and sing of your goodness and grace, Lord, break the power of fear and anxiety over our lives today. And Lord, may your presence bring a true transformation that will last in the days ahead, Lord. So once again, we celebrate the gift of your presence. We celebrate this gift of fellowship and the freedom that we have uh, to be able to worship you today. We minister unto you first today. We love you. We're grateful. And we receive the fullness of your joy that comes from your presence today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Hey, beloved church family, so good to be with you online today. Thank you for joining with us uh, for both our San Jose Christian Alliance Church and our New Vine Church families. Welcome. We are so glad that uh, you are here with us. We're coming to you again from our San Jose Sanctuary. Um, so I just want to also wanted to thank uh, Nate and Annie, one of our other worship team uh, leader couples from our San Jose Church. Uh, Nate said aloha because he's actually originally from Hawaii, and then Annie is from Malaysia, so a very uh, overseas crew with us today. So thank you again for Nay and Annie, uh, in case those New Vine folks uh, that may not be familiar with them, that's who they are. So again, we are doing things a little bit differently uh, each week, so don't be surprised if uh, you see some things different. But how are you doing, church family? How's it been? It's so good to see some of our church families and individuals send in their video greetings uh, earlier on in the service. If you missed that, uh, be sure to join us earlier or you can we watch this again, but we'll try to do more of that over the next few weeks. We'll try to get snippets of people sending in their greetings uh, just so that you can see some of our uh, smiley, friendly, familiar faces. You know, we have just finished our fifth week of sheltering in place, and I can't even believe that it's already been five weeks. Um, I'm sure that five weeks ago, none of us would have imagined life as we have been living now. Uh, I never thought that I would be home with my three young kids 24-7. I never thought that I would be uploading schoolwork, logging into Zoom calls for my preschooler, trying to juggle all of the different assignments that are due for the two older kids with the new distance learning platforms. I never thought that I would be helping Cheryl dye her hair. That's what I did Sunday night. And I'm sure she never thought that she would have to learn to cut my hair. She bought a razor the other day, and I'm still waiting for her to experiment on our two younger boys before praying for my own turn. So you can pray for me and for her when that happens. And I know that many of you are now suddenly de facto educators um, or de facto hairstylists. Uh, I know Pastor Ted and some of our other pastors are de facto cameramen. Um, but I'm praying for all of you as we move into our new de facto roles. Uh, for all of us, our lives have been majorly impacted over the last five or six weeks. Um, some of us have been juggling working from home, uh, trying to keep the kids on a schedule, or like me, trying to keep them from killing each other, uh, trying to stay safe, but also trying to care for others. Um, some of us actually, because we're working from home, might even be logging in longer hours since everything is now online. Uh, some of us might be Zoomed out of all of the meetings that we are in. Uh, some of us actually might be waking up in the middle of the night trying to get a delivery online service, hoping that a window would open up for your online groceries. Um, and some of us may just be feeling so cooped up um, since we can't really go anywhere. And some of us who are first responders and essential workers, we're still having to go into work and really be on the front lines. And, and some of us that may have our own businesses, we may have had to scale back or even potentially close our business for the time being. You know, regardless of your exact situation, please know that as your church family, we want to be there with you. And we want to be there for you. So please let us, either Pastor Ted or myself, know if there's anything that we can do to help you with, whether it be prayer, financial support, just chatting on the phone, a Zoom call, 
whatever it is, please let us know. Because we want to go through this together as a body of Christ. Today, I want to share with you a passage of scripture from the Old Testament. It's actually from the book of Psalms, and it's actually Psalm 27, to be exact. Uh, Let's read this together from the NIV translation, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Verse 6. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at his sacred tent. I will sacrifice With shouts of joy, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Join with me as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to gather today. Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would speak to us today, that you would reveal your truth, reveal your promises to us this day, even as we are gathered throughout the South Bay and the Greater Bay Area. Come and dwell among us. Speak to us, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You know, this Psalm of David may be a familiar one, and perhaps for some, it might be one of your favorite Psalms. You know, it speaks of a time, or perhaps times, when David was pursued by his enemies, encountered false witnesses, adversaries, and violent people, violent foes. Turbulent times, times of fear, times of unknown, times of darkness sort of like what we're facing and going through today. Yet, as we read this psalm, we notice that somehow David is able to take his focus off of himself, the people that are pursuing him, and to turn his focus upwards to the Lord. Now, what is it that actually enabled David to not be afraid, to not care about what his foes said against him, to disregard his enemies. How could David be so confident in his Lord during times of distress, during times of uncertainty? And likewise for us today, as God's people, how can we also be confident in our Lord during times of chaos and uncertainty? You know, David starts the psalm in verses 1 through 3, by saying, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. 
This is a proven confidence that David was writing about. Now, I just want to start off today by addressing the elephant in the room, by really addressing this topic of fear. Let's be honest and really ask ourselves, what fear do I have during this pandemic? What fear do I have in this new decade of 2020? Is it about my family? Is it about my health? Maybe our kids, our elderly parents? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel isolated because maybe you're sheltering in place by yourself? Is it your job or your business that has temporarily cut down or, or, or been closed? What about your finances? Are you fearful for your finances or for your future? You know, we know very well that fear has the potential to paralyze and the potential to cripple all of us. But how is it that David is able to say, whom shall I fear and of whom shall I be afraid when his enemies were pursuing him, when people were trying to do him harm and evil? Where did David's confidence come from? And what was he thinking so that in these first three verses, he could actually say, whom shall I fear and of whom shall I be afraid? Maybe perhaps David remembered the times when God allowed him to kill the bear and the lion single-handedly when he was just a young shepherd boy. Or surely David remembered when God delivered Goliath in front of the Philistine army, when, when basically it was just a mere pebble and a slingshot and the giant was struck dead. Or when the Lord time and time again delivered him from King Saul's spear and his hands and even allowed him to cut off a part of the king's robe when they were in that cave many years ago. You know, David remembered the numerous times that God was with him, that his Lord was with him and was his light in his salvation. David called to mind the numerous times that God saved him from the perils of death. You know, it's God's light that illuminates the darkness all around us. Darkness of trouble, of fear, of anxiety, and danger. David remembered the faithfulness of God to be with him through thick and through thin. And I want to ask you today, church family, what are we putting our confidence in at this moment? Is it our government? Is it the media? Is it all those stories, fake news, real news? Is it even our healthcare professionals? Is it our education, our upbringing, Maybe our nest egg, maybe our savings that might be kind of going down because the stocks aren't doing well. You know, we need to place our confidence on the one who is faithful, on the one who doesn't change, on the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the one who is our light, the one who is our salvation, the one who is our stronghold, as David experienced. How has the Lord gotten you, church family, individually, through your past fears, through your past challenges? How has he been faithful? Call that to mind today, how the Lord has perhaps delivered you from the paw of the lion or of the bear. We need to recount, retell, and remember what God has done in the past and how he has been our light in dark times. You know, you know, at the end of the verse, you know, it, 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 verse three, it's as though an army besieged me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then I will be confident. It is as if today the Lord is even speaking to us today that even though a virus may threaten our society, even then will I be confident because I put my trust in the Lord who is my light and my salvation. It's a confidence that David had in his proven God that pulled him through in the past. And it's that same confidence that you and I have in our God, our Abba Father, who is faithful, who can pull us through in this present day and promises to pull us through tomorrow. The next thing I want to focus on 
is seeking the Lord's presence from verses four through six of Psalm 27. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At a sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. David pivots from the first three verses, from talking of his problems, to these next three verses, from verses four to six. This is where he begins to turn his focus from the circumstances that he went through to the Lord of his circumstances. He talks about one thing, and that's being in God's house. It's being in his temple. It's being in the shelter of his sacred tent. Now, we all know that because of sheltering in place, we can't be back to worship at SJCAC or at New Vine at Mountain View Academy. But you know what? We can still be in the house of the Lord together because it really goes beyond the four walls of any church building, of any physical building. It's really about seeking the manifest presence of the Lord and being in that presence. Right now, wherever you are, in your homes, with your families, whether it's in your living room, on your kitchen table, in your bedroom, even in your car, wherever you are, you can seek that manifest presence of the Lord. You can ask him to descend upon your dwelling right now and to be with you. Just like how Pastor Ted last week on Resurrection Sunday uh, reminded us of how when Jesus appeared to the disciples in John 20, that Jesus' presence was with them. That same presence is with you and me today. And that's what David is saying that he wants to seek. And brothers and sisters, today, I want to encourage you, I want to remind you to continue to seek for that presence, the manifest presence of the Lord, so that we don't have to look at our circumstances, but we seek his presence because he is the Lord beyond our circumstances. And in that last section of this passage of verse 6, that last part, I think that's really key. It says, then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround him, me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with jo shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Praise and shouting joyfully is, I believe, what makes that, pre that, that difference. Are we still able to sacrifice and make shouts of joy? Are we still able to sing and make music to the Lord? Are we still able to rejoice in the Lord because he is our light, because he is our salvation? Even despite the uncertainties, are you and I still able to declare his goodness, to declare his praise, to count his promises, and to declare to one another who he is? Are we able to sing of the goodness of God, even though we're going through times of uncertainty? What does that look like for you today? What does it look like for your family? You know, now that we've been at home, uh, the kids and I try to make it a point every day to have times of worship. Uh, we, we play songs on YouTube on the, on the TV screen, and, 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 and they have a good time singing. But, but sometimes it's funny because they all fight to, to, to get to be who the worship leader is, or, or they all want to be the drummer, or they all want to play guitar. And sometimes the worship time doesn't end quite as I would have liked, but we still try to have a spirit of worship and praise, and we try to declare God's goodness in our household, really declaring his worth, declaring his praise, and shouting out, having, asking God for that spirit of worship, for that spirit of joy. Because it says in the Psalms that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you to seek the Lord's presence today. That because of his presence, you will be able to declare his joy. You will be able to sing his praise because of who he is to you. And the last thing that I want to point out from this passage is seeking his face from verses 7 to 10. Hear my voice when I call, Lord, David says. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, 
God my Savior. Though my mother, my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. In the midst of trouble, David not only desires to be in God's house and presence, but he desires to seek the Lord's face. The fact that the God of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, desires us to seek him still boggles my mind. I don't know if you ever thought about that. But God wants us to seek him. He wants us to seek his face. He wants us to gaze upon his beauty, to know him intimately. Again, it goes back to that relationship that the Lord desires for you and I to have as his people, as his children, as his son, as his daughter. Not a casual, okay, hi God, how you doing relationship, but really an intimate, close relationship as a father to a child where we know him face to face. How have you been seeking the Lord's face these days? For a lot of us, we may have more time these days. We don't have to commute, sit in traffic. We have maybe fewer commitments, fewer kids' activities to drive to. Are we using that reclaimed time that the Lord has given us to seek his face? Are we using those precious moments to really say, God, would you reveal your glory to me? God, would you reveal your face to me just like you were face to face with your servant Moses? Just like David was a man after your own heart. God, help me to seek your face. Just a few thoughts from Psalm 27. Really, some snippets from from David and, and what he went through. I can't even imagine what he went through. But as an encouragement for us today, whatever you are going through in week five or six of sheltering in place, the Lord knows. The Lord knows. All your fears, maybe your struggles. I want to invite you to give those fears, to give those struggles, to lay them down at his feet. I want to invite you to really be reminded of why you have a confident, have you have a confidence. And that's because God has been faithful. God has brought you and I through times of fear. God has brought you and I through times of the unknown. God has brought you and I through special circumstances. And I want to remind you of those things today to allow the Lord to remind you that he is your faithful God. What are you placing your confidence in? What are you seeking? Are you seeking the Lord's presence? Are you seeking his face? Or are you seeking the latest news? Are you trying to get caught up with CNN or the local news? I want to invite you to really set some time aside today, even now, to seek the Lord and to seek his face. Let's just prepare our hearts as we go into a time of worship and as we reflect on Psalm 27, who God is as our light, as our salvation, that we can rest in his shelter, that we can rest in his presence, that we can rest knowing that the Lord desires for us to seek him. I love you, Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand the moment that I wake up 
Till I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath the goodness of God your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness of God in all my life you have been faithful in all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God God we thank you for being a good and faithful father we thank you, Lord, that's who you are. You're our Father, and you delight to take care of your children. You delight to care for your people. So Jesus, as we come today, as we worship you, we thank you, Lord, for your reminder, God, that you are our light, that you are our salvation, that, Jesus, we have nothing to be fearful of. God, we come to you today, and we bring you any and every fear. God. You know what they are. Search our hearts, Lord. We submit every fear to you, whether it be of our future, our finances, our own lives, 
our health. God, we submit the fears at the foot of the cross. And then we say, God, that we today want to place our confidence in you because you are a good and faithful father, because you are a God who takes care of us, because you are a God who desires for us to be in your presence. You are the one, Lord, who we, we can take shelter with. God, we can shelter in place with you. God, you are our canopy. You are our tent. You are our covering. And so, Jesus, we say thank you for your presence today. Thank you for visiting us in our homes today. Thank you, Lord, for being with us, with your people today. God, we need your presence, and we desire to seek your face. So, Jesus, as we come, as we close today, Lord, we want to continue to seek your face. We want to continue to worship you. We want to continue to declare who you are, your goodness, your faithfulness, your love, your ever, never-ending compassion towards your people. So God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your promises. God, we desire to continue to trust and depend upon you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. For it's in your precious name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again today. We're so glad that you could be with us. Continue to join us for another fellowship hour or table talk. I'll log into Zoom right now. We'd love to chat with you, to see your smiley face, to pray with you, and to share how God has been good. See you next week, everyone. God bless you.